What is up guys? Uh, I just recently received another prop uh, from UPS which was totally destroyed in shipping because it was packed horribly. So today we're gonna do a little video about packing your collectibles to be shipped. Okay, so for the sake of illustrating what we're doing today, we are gonna use this tiny little Funko Vader uh, guy. I know he's a little small, but for the sake of uh, the example that we're gonna do, this will work just fine. Now, I'm just gonna take you through the process that I use when I ship things that knock on wood. Uh, usually gets the job done. First order of business, uh, especially if you have paint that is gloss or maybe just a fresh coat of paint that isn't uh, totally cured yet, you're gonna wanna make sure that you do an initial layer of paper around whatever it is you're shipping. So I will typically take my prop, I'll lay it in the middle, uh, and then I will wrap it up. There's no perfect science to this other than the goal of this layer is to cover the outside surfaces of the prop before it goes into bubble wrap. Something else I'll note here is that uh, we've all received packages of collectibles where there seems to be half a roll of tape used. Yeah, that's a real pain to unwrap. Use the appropriate amount of tape. In this case, for this layer, all I need is enough tape to pin this paper in place. I don't need to wrap this thing four different directions and make it a pain to unpackage. Uh, all that extra tape between these layers doesn't even necessarily protect the item you're shipping all that much more. Okay, so next up is the most important uh, layer and that is your bubble wrap. Now bubble wrap's gonna come in different, with different size bubbles depending on the, the shape um, of what you are wrapping. If I'm going to use different sizes of bubble wrap, I usually try to work from small bubbles to large bubbles on the outside. Don't think that one layer of bubble wrap is gonna do the trick. It's not, that's not how this works. You need to build up layers of bubble wrap so that you have a nice cushiony pillow around what you're shipping. So in this case, since this is kind of a tube shaped item, we're just gonna roll it up. And I wanna make sure I work that bubble wrap into the little negative spaces that are on the, the item itself. Depending on the shape of what you're sending, this varies wildly. But in this case, it's a simple shape. Again, I don't need a boatload of tape on, the, on, these, on these layers. So I need just enough, in this case, to tack the bubble wrap closed. Okay, so we tack our bubble wrap closed. Uh, if I do something that ends up like a tube, uh, I like to close these ends and really make sure that uh, this, this bubble wrap is nice and snug all the way around. Uh, you wanna make sure that whatever's in there is under a little bit of pressure, nice and tight and compressed. Okay, so now I have this little padded pillow. It's gonna end up being significantly larger than the item itself. That's how you know you're getting to the right amount of padding. So next up, it comes time to put this into a box. If I have multiple items that are going out together, you do not wrap multiple individual items inside a little bubble wrap pillow like this. All of the items need to be wrapped individually so that when they go into their box, each is padded and they can't clank against each other. I've received props that have uh, a bunch of loose items put together in a pile and then wrapped up like this. Yeah, that doesn't help anyone. Stuff still ends up breaking because they're kind of clanging and pushing against each other inside of this little bubble wrapped piece. Okay, so you've got your box. Around the item, you need to leave two or three inches of packing material between the bubble wrap and the outside walls of the box. Now I'm just gonna represent this loosely because we're just talking it through and I'm not actually shipping this out, but this stage is really important. So I'll take the rest of my, in this case, packing peanuts. I will dump them into all the negative space that's around the item. And you wanna make sure all the sides, top, bottom, left, right, front and back, all the sides are nice and padded. I'm not gonna do the top right now just because we're just only illustrating how this works. So you can see now I've got my padded pillow in there of uh, bubble wrap, and then around it I have my packing peanuts which create another layer. And if I was packing this for real, there'd be a, at least another layer of, of packing peanuts on top to create that same uh, setup. 
Now, at this point, I would close the box up, tape it up nice and snug, and you wanna do one last check before it goes out. You wanna be able to shake the, uh, the box and make sure that nothing is moving around in there. One of the keys to shipping out something and getting it to arrive safely is making sure that nothing is loose inside of the box where it can back, uh, bounce around. So you want it padded, you want it snug, you don't want anything moving loose inside of there. If I have a smaller package, I'll add one extra layer of protection and that's that I will take my packing tape and I will laminate that box uh, in packing tape. Now obviously this gets costly and annoying if the box is large, but on a smaller package, that really makes the outside uh, of the, the box much more waterproof and ready to deal with like conveyor belts and just like the, the brutality that is shipping something through the mail. Once it's laminated a bit, it's gonna be so much stronger. Honestly, just reinforcing the corners of your box with extra packing tape is a good step. Uh, when you think about packages being sorted or falling down conveyor belts or getting shifted around on slides and things at distribution centers, that really makes a big difference. And it makes it less likely that you're gonna have, uh, get a poke where something can rip, you know, the box open and potentially expose what's inside. One more word of warning about packing materials. Um, the other packing material I do not like to use are those inflated bubble mailers that you sometimes see Amazon use. They're like a little, hang on, let me see if I have one here to show you. Here we go, okay. So I'm sure that these things have a place and I have used them when I ship really big stuff like helmets that have a lot of space to fill in. But for the most part, these things suck. Stay away from them. The problem is, unlike bubble wrap, which has all these individual pockets in there, each of these panels only has one pocket, one poke or one slow leak that you don't see, uh, and it can deflate at least one section. Sometimes there's versions of these where two or three like pockets are all tied together in one chamber of air, meaning that if any, if there's a leak in any of that section, the whole thing is gonna deflate. And by the time it gets to where it needs to be, you might only have half the packing material you started out with. I try to avoid those things unless I really need to take up big space for a larger item. A little bit of extra money and time on packing materials or just getting things packed up well could save you months of screwing around with damage claims through UPS or the post office or whoever uh, on the back end. And if you guys haven't been down that road, I can tell you, unless something is packed really, really well and you have photos of that packing that show it, they're gonna deny that claim like 90% of the time. Uh, so t put in the extra effort, make sure your stuff, especially if it's an expensive collectible, gets to where it's going without any drama. Thank you for watching today. If you wanna see more videos about props, statues, collecting, uh, please subscribe, I would really appreciate it. We'll see you guys next time, bye.